guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to be painting and customizing these pots for my indoor plants that I have for my plant baby. So I'm super excited to do that and I hope you guys love it and follow along. So yeah, we're gonna get started, bye. So here's my supply area. I have some brushes, some acrylic paint, two clay pots with two saucers and also some tacky glue used for crafting and some gems and rhinestones used to bedazzle the pots at the end. Also make sure your area is covered with newspaper and all your supplies is in one area. You don't want to create a big mess so you have a lot to clean up at the end. So I got these pots from Hobby Lobby. The big one was $3.99 and the smaller one was $2.99. And the two saucers were $1.37 each. So I couldn't pass them up to customize them because I couldn't find any pots that I liked. And these are my plant babies here that will be going into these pots once I am finished painting and customizing them to my knees. So I just wanted you to see them. So first I wanted to kind of situate everything. Here I have two bowls that I'm going to be using for painting to help me along the way. And I got my brushes and everything ready to go. So I just shook up the white paint and put it into the bowl to help me um, when I was painting just to keep everything nice and contained. So I just squeezed a little bit in there and got to go in with painting. So I just did one coat of the white all the way around the pot. And to make sure I didn't miss any spots, I went back over it, but this was all technically the first coat for me. Um, so yeah, that's what I did. You know, just making sure no spots were missed while it was drying um, before the second coat of paint. So I did the same thing with the smaller pot. I went around with the white paint one time and I made sure all the spots were really well covered and you know I didn't miss any spots. So I kind of took my time doing this just to make sure and you know I picked it up after a while to make sure I got everything you know around the pot and was spinning it you know just to cover all your bases. And that was the first coat for that as well. So while those two pots were drying, I wanted to paint the saucers as well. So I started to do that. So I painted these, um, just the insides of them, not the bottom yet, and also the sides of both of these as well. So after I was done with the saucers, it was time to paint the pots for the second coat of the white paint. This was very important because I didn't want any of that clay pot, that oranginess to come out at all. I wanted everything to be covered in white because I was going to paint over that with my purple paint. So I just went over again really good with the white paint on the big pot and also the small pot as well. Ta-da, everything's painted. So after letting it sit a while and also painting the bottom white as well, it was time to put the purple paint on the pot and get going. So in the beginning, I kind of messed up. So I just painted over it before doing the purple with white again. But I didn't really have a method or rhyme or reason to this painting. I just kind of wanted to freestyle it as much as I could and kind of make a marbly type ombre effect on the pots. and. Yeah, I really liked how it turned out. I wanted the bottom to be more of a solid purple, so I did that all around once I got to the end, and yeah. Okay, so for the smaller pot, I knew I wanted the white to show more than the previous pot. So I wanted this big, you know, thick line uh, separating the white and the purple, so that's why I tried to create here. Pieces, pieces. Eventually I did go get a rubber band because I just wanted a guide to help with painting of that line to distinguish the two colors but it didn't have to be um, perfect for me but if you do want perfect lines you can always tape it you know as straight as you can or um, also position a rubber band as straight as you can as well. And once the rubber band was placed, I just kind of painted over it just all the way around where I marked the um, line to be and made sure everything was just painted evenly with no missed spots, no bubbles, no big wet spots or anything like that. So I just did that all the way around. 
And whenever I was done with this method, I took the rubber band off at the end so it would not dry hard on the pot. So I just did that at the end after I was done painting the white line and I just let it sit for about like five minutes or so. So here is the finished product of the painting portion of the pots. I really loved how they turned out and I just set them aside so they can dry for the next part. So while the pots were drying, I went ahead and painted the bottom of the saucers that we painted earlier and set them aside so they can dry. So the final step was to put some bling on the pot. So this was my favorite part. I just picked out some gems that I liked and used a tacky glue to glue them on the pot. So the glue came out white, but it dries clear. So don't be afraid if you get a little bit on the pot. You can also use any hot glue if you want or any other type of crafting glue that will stick to this type of clay pot. You filled up my cup, my cup. So for the smaller pot, I did the exact same thing. So I just picked some gems that I wanted to use to bedazzle the pot, use some tacky glue, and place them on the pot. I am overwhelmed, overtaken by your love, and I just cannot believe it. You call me and here is the final product. They turned out so great. I love them so much. I ended up painting the inside of the pots white and purple as well, just to kind of put a finishing touch. But I love them. I hope you did too and enjoyed this video and look for more to come. Bye.